Hey, today let's talk about mission planning. If you're using a modern receiver that tracks GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, Beidou, you don't need to do mission planning if you're working in the open. But if you're collecting data to process in Opus, especially Opus RS, or you're running RTK under heavy canopy, you might benefit and in the case of Opus RS, you will definitely benefit from doing mission planning. Now, if you do mission planning after your job fails, it's called postmortem. So it's usually better to do mission planning before you go out in the field. And most of the time, all you're going to need to do is adjust the time that you eat lunch. It'll help you be more successful collecting Opus rapid static data. So the tool that I use is the Trimble Mission Planning tool, which you can get online. And there's a desktop and a mobile app version. Both of them are similar. The first thing you want to do is move this little icon to the location where you're currently at and enter an approximate height. If you're doing Opus in the open, a 15 degree mask is reasonable and you can pick the day. Down here, we're going to pick the time zone so that we can get times in our local time. But I'll tell you, this can be troublesome because the offset from UTC is variable. And sometimes you'll be planning jobs in the future when it's a different, you know, daylight savings time versus standard time, or you're going to be working in a different time zone. For instance, if you are working over on the west edge of Utah, you might move into Nevada, which is an hour off. I don't know if it's better to work in UTC, but I often, I, I mean, here in Utah, we're either six or seven hours minus from UTC. The way I figure it out is I ask Google, what time is it? So right now it says it's 8.17 p.m. So I've asked, what time UTC is it? 8.17, I come down on my computer clock, it's 1.17. So right now the offset is a negative seven hours. That's really important. And this is a mistake that most people make when they do mission planning is they get the wrong time zone. Now, I usually pick a starting time of eight o'clock or usually seven with a 12 hour period and then click the apply button. Now you notice I only have GPS satellites selected right now. And the reason is I'm gonna do Opus RS perhaps, which only currently today, it's February, 2023, Opus RS only uses GPS satellites. So then if we go down to the charts tab, you'll see the PDOPs here. And for today, GPS only, if I were to collect data from 1120 to 1150, say I did a half hour Opus RS solution, it would not converge. So I would not get a solution. But then from here to three o'clock, pretty good. And then again, from 3 p.m. until 5 p.m. What we're looking for here is DOP, and I usually use the green value here, and I'm looking for DOPs that are less than three. If they're above three, it's a no-go for me. And if you're interested in what causes DOPs, you can look that up on Wikipedia. It's a function of the number of the satellites and where they are in the sky. So, Let's move this line over to this dot spike here, and then let's look at the sky plot. And you'll see at that time, there are only five satellites available in the sky, and there's really nothing, well, there's never anything to the north, but the way they're spread out, there's nothing in this quadrant, and there's not much over here in this quadrant. And that's what's causing the dot to spike up. Look here, other times of the day, there's more satellites, and they're spread through the sky in a better pattern. Now this time right here, I'm gonna guess there's a high dot here. You can tell that by going back to charts and rolling down. Now, it's not super high. It's not as bad as it gets. So that's if you're doing Opus or Opus RS, especially Opus RS. The good thing about a two hour session is typically there aren't any DOP spikes that are longer than two hours. Now, if we're doing RTK, let's turn on 
everything. There's no QZSS available here at Ornance, but we'll turn on everything. And you'll see that our DOPS are always less than three. In fact, they're always less than two and a half. So smooth sailing with RTK. One thing you should consider, though, for Beidou is um, some receivers only track B1, B2. So if you've got one of those receivers, you would want to uncheck all of the Beidou satellites with a higher number than 14. You can do that by going none and then checking 1 through 14, I think is the easiest way. An example of a receiver that kind of falls into this category is the IG-8 that we sell. It's B1, B2 only. It doesn't track B3. But if you have a matched pair or you have a network receiver that tr is transmitting corrections for B1, higher satellites, 14 and higher, are actually used, but they're only used for fine positioning not for integer ambiguity. You'll see that this won't make any difference here for our DOPS. I mean, we do get a DOPS spike, but not a PDOPS spike above two. Smooth sailing the entire day. What if, let's, let's go back to a receiver that tracks everything. So, all. What if we are doing RTK in heavy canopy. And let's assume we've got a matched base rover pair. We're not using a network. If you're using a network, you need to figure out what satellites are available on the base because tracking satellites on a rover without matching satellites on a base won't do you any good. But let's assume that we're doing, we've got a pair of uh, IG-9s or a pair of BRX-7s or whatever. And they track everything, R-12s. Enable everything. How are you going to simulate being in heavy tree canopy? Well, the way I do it is I say, well, there's, there's not going to be any satellites be below 35 degrees available for the receiver to track. Just there's too much trees, there's buildings, whatever, if you're in a deep canyon. So I simulate it with an elevation cutoff of 35 or 30 or 40. And let's see what that does. We'll click apply here and then we'll go down to charts. And you'll see there's some huge dot spikes above five. So if you're out in canopy from here to here or from here to here, you probably won't get a fix. If you do get a fix, it won't be as good of a fix as you would get, you know, if you waited another half an hour. And a lot of times when you sit and wait for your receiver to get a fix under heavy canopy, the receiver isn't getting a fix because it's figuring things out. It's figuring things out because the satellite constellation is becoming more favorable. So you're actually waiting for a lower PDOP. So right now, you know, if we look at this, we've got PDOPs that are two and a half to five and a half. If we go back and change our elevation cutoff to 15 degrees and come and look at the PDOP again, you'll see that never goes above 1.5. So that's the effect of working in heavy canopy. Anyway, if you're going to do mission planning, do it before you collect the data. It doesn't do any good to do it afterwards. More constellations is more better. I suspect in a year or two, or maybe later this year, the NGS will enable processing of GLONASS and probably BDS and certainly Galileo, maybe not GLONASS. We'll have more satellites in our static computations, and maybe Opus will work better for short occupations under moderate canopy. Thank you very much. I hope you have a super day. I'll see you in the next video.